Hey, in today's video, let's talk about two of the most popular productivity tools out there, Notion and Kodak. So let's go through a little bit. What are the first impressions? What are the different features in both tools? How they integrate into your workflows with other products that you're using? What are their pricing schemes? And what are my final thoughts? So first of all, both are productivity tools that are going to be very focused on helping you drive your projects, your documentation, and being able to have everything into just one space. And actually, when you see about their way that they introduce themselves in their own websites, there's really not a very big difference in how the tools even look like. So my first impression is that both of them were, look quite similar and both of them potentially solve the same kind of problem and needs from you. And before I start talking about their features, I would like to say that I have been working with both Notion and Coda. So I would not say that I'm an expert in both of them. Definitely I have been working more with Notion, but something that I wanted to disclose first. So when we look more in detail, what do they offer? Let's just start with Notion, which is probably the most popular of both of the tools. And when you see Notion, Notion is going to offer you ways of basically tracking your work with things like a product roadmap where you can have uh, tasks and their statuses, but you have different ways of visualizing these databases. This is the power of these tools is that they integrate databases that you can have information behind them. And those databases can be reflected or viewed in different ways, like a timeline or a Kanban board or whatnot. That makes it makes them very powerful tools. On top of that, Notion also offers a wiki and wikis are very, very convenient and very easy to work with. I like them much more, of course, than having documentation, for example, in Google Docs. Not wanting to downplay Google Docs, they have their place, but it's not the same position. Um, I think that when you are thinking about structuring the knowledge that you have in the company of the different projects, wikis are the way to go. And because their system is very flexible and it works with uh, blocks in a way. And this is not too dissimilar from Coda. The good thing is that you can adapt them to work in different ways. So that same wiki page can be adapted to work more like a document. And then you can have, for example, meeting notes or whatever you can imagine. The powerful thing here is that you can create templates. So you are consistent in the way of working and you can do templates in both of the tools. So I'm basically talking high level of the features that both of the tools have, but I will go quickly and also check them in Coda so you can see them there. Notion has also added recently a Notion AI. This Notion AI is also a good way to start your work. It just helps you to, for example, build a template. So if you want to build a template for meeting notes, it's going to help you doing that. I would not disregard it. I think it's a good, it probably doesn't do all the work that you need, but it's great, I think, for, for starting and adding all the like bulk of the information, for example, or maybe the tasks that you're going to have to do, refine from there. That, I think, is a very beneficial way. It's going to be a time saver for you. I think the most powerful feature that Notion has are the building blocks. Everything is built like building blocks. It's like a Lego that you can change, then rearrange as you see it fit. This can apply to your documentation and to the different uh, chapters that you are writing that you can then just move around and easily place them and make them look as you want. You can actually make it look really close to what your brand guidelines are, and this is a thing that very valuable because you can publish some of this documentation to your customers. So you can have shared documentation to the web. And these blocks is what going to help you to then have, for example, like the different views on the same data. This is going to be very important because you don't want to have duplicate data. You have everything like a database. Then you have those blocks that are going to help you and allow you to see the data in different ways. For example, seeing it uh, by a status, seeing it by sprint, seeing it by launch time. Uh, you can arrange the data and show it according different data that you have in the database, if that makes sense. That is going to be great for you and going to be great for the different needs that different people are going to have in visualizing the same data in the company. I want to go now quickly also through Coda and check a little bit what are their main features. 
honestly, it's not going to vary a lot. It's going to vary a little bit on the details of some of these features and then that I will come in a moment. So again, Coda is going to be the place also to keep your documentation. Both of them have started more from that point of view of a little bit like a, what is a wiki and what is a modern wiki. Let's put it that way. I don't want to say that they want to be just a wiki, but they just want to be a modern wiki that is going to help you manage your work. That's why they are productivity tools. Again, as you can see, they focus a lot on collaboration and again, not very uh, different from Notion. Both of them are collaborative tools and that's what wikis are, where everybody can work and be together uh, compiling the documentation, for example, of a project. And as I said earlier, it, the principle of working with these blocks is very similar in, in Coda as it is in Notion. That's going to allow you to have different views on the same data. For example, here is showing the same data view them by different teams. Different teams are going to be interested in different things. So for example, engineering uh, and then marketing, probably they want to look at similar data, but they don't want to understand it and they don't want to interpret it or, or work with it in the same way. This is gonna be great for you to understand, hey, I have this feature, but maybe if I'm a marketing person, I'm caring more about when do I actually have to do the promotion? Whereas in engineering, I'm more caring about how am I going to build this feature? And this is something that Coda has that I haven't seen in Notion. Coda has really great uh, handling or visualization of data for this kind of productivity tool. Of course, it's not a BI tool. Um, it, I don't think it tries to be, so a business intelligence tool. But it is really great to have that kind of visualization already within the tool. Because for example, if you are doing a project, it might be able to tr help you to track the progress of that project with a dashboard, which is always much more visual for most of the people than having to go to a Kanban board to see the situation. The Kanban board is gonna be great for the engineering team, for example. It's not gonna be great, for example, for the marketing team. They don't need to see all the details, not all the information. A good dashboard is gonna tell them much more. This notion, you have to bring dashboards. Seriously, it's great. Integrations, both of them are going to have integrations to many different tools. I think that in Coda has a little bit set of integrations that Notion has. And I think that Coda is also better when it comes to automating tasks than Notion is. Notion, probably you have to use more something like Zapier to be able to do automation of tasks uh, with Coda, you have a certain level or a higher level of uh, automation that you have in Notion. As for the pricing, both of the tools have a free plan. And I think that in both of, the, of them, it's actually quite good for considering that this is just a free plan and it's something that it allows you to work with a smaller team and it allows you to have a collaborative workspace integrate with different tools already I'm talking now about Notion and even invite some guests to, to work with you in the, free, uh, in the free plan. When it comes to Coda, it's not very different. You have access to collaborative tools, tables, uh, formulas and automation, and even data from third party. And you can also, as I say, work uh, for free with your whole team. So you actually can use these free plans to get started, try it, see if it works. And if it works, you can decide if you want to move on into one of the paid plans or not. Then when it comes to the pricing, when you look first at, at uh, Notion, you can see that, hey, they're talking about the plus uh, uh, plan to be $8 per month per user, and then the business one being $15 uh, per user per month. And yes, they up, uh, upgrade the number of projects that you can have, the number of people, of course, and the number of guests. Uh, of course, it goes with the number of people, the pricing. But then, of course, in the business, you go into things like uh, SSO, uh, private team spaces, uh, advanced page analytics, and so on. And then in both of them, you have an enterprise model. If I go now quickly to Coda, again, now I have a $10 per month a per doc maker. And for the team level, I have the $30 per month per doc maker. And I also have my enterprise. Again, not very different. What are the the, the, the functionalities that you enable with those plans. What I think is the very big difference is that in Coda, your price is per doc maker and is not per viewer. In Notion, the price is per user. You can have viewers, but I don't remember how many viewers you can have. 
I'm not completely sure about that. I had to check that. I think I will have to check that out. But I think that in the end, you have to pay for everybody that is using Notion. When it comes to Coda, you pay for the document maker. And I think that that's a very big difference that you are not going to have to pay so for so many people because there's going to be many people in the company that might be just going there to view the, the information. When you think about these tools, I would say that in most of the cases, most of the people should be working with them and they should be using them actively to input their data. But the reality is that not always is going to be the case. And there's going to be certain people that are going to be using more and certain things that are going to be using more and certain things that won't do it so much. That's going to happen many times. And I think that this makes sense then for teams and companies where not all the teams are going to be so actively uh, producing information within something like Coda or Notion. So what are my thoughts on both tools? I, I had to say that I love this in a way uh, one tool that does it all uh, concept uh, for productivity tools. I think that it can replace many tools out there. I, I understand that there are many tools that are very focused on a specific workflows of teams. And I think that they still make sense. And I think that you should still use them, but you should still use them when you use them for the purpose that they are built. If you then use them as many people are using them, and not having very strong workflows uh, built into those tools, I think that in many cases, something like Coda or Notion are going to be able to do that work for you. So what is the summary? Where I think that you should be using Notion and where you should be using uh, Coda. So let's start with Notion. I think that Notion probably is the easiest one to use. I think that it has a very small learning curve. It doesn't take very long to start using it, understand what it does. If you go into the databases, of course, it always gets a little bit more complicated to understand what kind of data, creating templates, so on. That is always a little bit more of a learning curve there, but it still is a pretty easy to learn and to use tool. I think that it also offers a great experience in mobile. I think that that's something that maybe Coda is not as good there. And I use it all the time, either on the phone or on the computer. Of course, when I'm typing, I'm writing more. It is much better, much more convenient on the computer, but to capture ideas, to just add a little bit of a note or a task that I need to be done in the future, the phone, it's great. It works really well. I think that working with databases, linking them, having the, all the different views, the idea that they have introduced recently with the projects, I think that that's great. And I think that that's something that I really appreciate. And nowadays you can have this level of project tasks as a separate uh, entities, but also link with each other. And you know how to do it manually. Really good. I really appreciate it. Uh, when it comes to Coda, I think that their strengths are in the databases management and the concept of spreadsheets that they have behind them, and then also on the automation of tasks. I think that that's where Coda shines. Being able to create dashboards, it is great. It's something that I miss a lot in Notion, and I think that that's something that it would benefit. I know that there are some extensions, never the same, much better to have it available there. Coda, you have done a good job there. So I really think that that's a very, very beneficial one. On the other hand, the learning curve for Coda, it's steeper than it is in Notion. And when I have been using Coda for work, I had never enjoyed it as much as I have enjoyed Notion. It, the usability is not the same, in, not in the same level. And yeah, I, maybe it's also the workflow of how I was implementing the company that it was a little bit strange workflow that might also have put me uh, a little bit in the back seat there, uh, maybe more defensive when thinking about Coda. I still think it's a good tool, but I think that it has a bigger learning curve and maybe the usability is not as good as it is in Notion. So what would be my recommendation? Well, if you have been watching this channel for a while, you know for sure that I'm using Notion and that I've been creating templates in Notion. So for me, Notion will be the tool. On the other hand, I will have to say that if you're looking for a productivity tool that is a only one tool, and you are very focused on the databases, on the data, on spreadsheets in a way, and analyzing that data and automating tasks, I think that Coda is going to be the tool for you. So if you want to go simple and easy, Notion, if you want to take more of a deep dive in the data, take a, a better understanding of what the data is with graphs, 
and having automated tasks, then Coda is going to be the tool. So simple workflows and easy to use Notion, more advanced workflows and automation Coda. So what do you, tool do you use? Do you use any of these tools or do you use something else? There's a ton of other alternatives out there. And because of the success of these earlier tools, there have been more and more productivity tools that have been coming up on these recent years. So let us know in the comments below. And as I said earlier, I use Notion a lot and I have been creating templates and documentation that is going to help you in your work uh, when you are managing tech products. If you are interested, I will put a link in the description and in the pinned comment below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.